the guys found out that this evaporator that had been installed for several years, it didn't contribute to the ref refrigeration because there was no refrigerant. And then suddenly, blop, 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 what happened? Plenty of liquid, pressure drops, and uh, you need to run your compressors hard to lift all the refrigerant out of the uh, standpipes. So we use full compressor capacity uh, peak load here. On uh, evaporator number two, the orange line here, luckily we had a much more stable and very fine pattern as we wanted to. There's no, there's no pressure, there's no liquid bulbs, there's no drying out, there's no pressure drops. So this is the picture we want to see. So luckily he had one really good working and one unfortunately also non-working evaporator in this uh, in this uh, freezing tunnel working with minus, five, uh, 20, minus 35 C. So that was a real life example. To give you some impression how we uh, install and operate the sensors, I have two uh, concept uh, drawings here, very simplified. I have uh, an evaporator, I have feed, I have uh, exhaust here, and um, what happens is I measure with a sensor here how much uh, liquid comes out after the evaporation happening here. Then I have a riser pipe, and I can then control an e electronic inlet valve over here from my sensor and controller here. I just give a 4 to 20 milliampere signal, so you are able to work with many different electronic uh, valves, and I'm not going to mention any names, because then we don't forget any. This is for pump circulated flooded system. Up here we have a sketch for a DX system. Again, we have a liquid running in here, we have the evaporation in the dry expansion system, we have exit here, again the sensor controlling an inlet valve, same sketch, basically just for a dry expansion system. And here, uh, here, of course, we don't want any liquid to be carried over. If we can measure whether there is any liquid carried over here, then we can reduce the amount of superheat in dry expansion systems. That is a significant amount of energy. Sir, you are nodding. Do you work with DX? Okay, I thought you may. Neither do I, I just work with sensors, but I'm doing my best. So, we are close. On the environmental part here, I think it's the last slide probably. Um, we believe we can, we, with, with this uh, technology, we can enable what is very difficult to control or has been up to now, we can control the ammonia dry expansion systems. I know that some few companies around the world has done it for uh, years. I know that many more have tried it without success, but this will uh, enable that uh, technology going forward. Uh, for a flooded uh, pump circulated system, we believe we can easily on many systems, both new and existing, save 10 to, 20, it's 10 to 15 percent, and equally with the uh, defrost on demand, we believe we can save on many, many systems 10 to 15 percent of your uh, electricity consumption. So that's why we're here. And uh, when you have uh, questions on anything, then please come to my uh, good friend Samir here from Metalix, or come to me. And if there are any, uh, any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, try to answer them. Thank you. Uh, just a second. Uh, I, I invite Mr. Ranjan Sinira to give the memo to Mr. Nielsen again. As a token of appreciation, uh, you know.
improvements. Thank you. Our next panel discussion will be on future trends in building cold chain and food processing industry projects with the environment friendly and energy efficient refrigeration plants using ammonia and carbon dioxide as a refrigerant. You know, we've been building uh, projects, cold chain, food processing industry projects with the Freon, using Freon as a gas, ammonia as a gas, uh, even what is used in the vapor absorption system. Off late, uh, Carbon dioxide is uh, one of uh, one of the refrigerant which is very popular in uh, developing countries like Europe, Japan, and uh, Scandinavian countries, uh, which is highly energy efficient and also uh, the, the environment friendly refrigerant. Uh, you know, we have right now um, three people who are going to discuss about which refrigerant uh, probably is. Uh, right refrigerant to be used for various application because every refrigerant has got its own properties, its own advantages and disadvantages, uh, the range of temperatures in which you have to use that. Uh, to discuss about that, uh, we have an interesting uh, people, experts uh, in this field. I welcome Mr. Uh, Fujimoto, who is the managing director of Mayakawa India, private limited, again it's a Japanese company. Mr. Fujimoto, please. Uh, we have Sanjay Gupta, uh, who is the director of in InfraCool. And we have Mr. P. Sudhir Kumar, who is the vice president of uh, Freaking Day Limited. Please join. Uh, Mr. Fujimoto um, is the managing director of um, Mayakawa India. His company has been uh, uh, doing uh, carbon dioxide based refrigeration uh, systems. Uh, they design and uh, they also set up the projects. It is very popular in uh, Europe. There is a tremendous amount of uh, energy efficiency in these systems. Uh, you know, they are, they are uh, talking about uh, the power consumption which is less than 30%, 40% less uh, compared to other alternate refrigeration systems. So uh, here in this uh, session, Mr. Fujimoto will be giving a sh very short presentation, brief presentation for 20 minutes. And followed by that, we will have a questions on uh, with other panelists. Yeah, Mr. Fujimoto, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Takeo Fujimoto from Maiko, India. So I, I'll give you that uh, presentation briefly, just a moment. Okay, uh, today uh, I'd like to describe you that uh, our company profile uh, briefly, and then after that uh, I'll describe you that uh, uh, ammonia CO2 brine system, uh, which is we are now uh, just started to introduce in India market briefly. And first of all, our company profile. Uh, our company founded in 1924. Our headquarters is located in Tokyo. Uh, number of employees are approximately 3,300. Uh, and then we are developing that uh, manufacturing compressor and its application for various fields. And then doing front engineering uh, activity in some areas. Uh, this year is 93rd years uh, since foundation. Uh, we sold approximately 10 lakh compressor in this world uh, to the value of field. Uh, in, 90, uh, in, in 1924, we started to manufacture the reciprocating compressor uh, and they started to manufacture the screw compressor from 1964. Uh, not only refrigeration system uh, for cold storage, etc. Et uh, 
uh, we have been supplying gas compressor to oil and gas field, uh, and then deboning machine to the uh, ice, uh, deboning machine to the food process plant, and so on. Uh, this slide shows that the, our global network. Uh, we have approximately 150 offices in this world, and then 11 plant around this around of this world, uh, including that the Indian plant. Uh, we can uh, supply our products and service through this uh, global network. And then we are providing this field, uh, various kind of field. Then here in India, uh, we are uh, doing uh, business uh, as a Micro India Private Limited. Then this company has founded uh, 10 years ago, and the headquarters is located in, located in Gurugaon. Then we have plant in Chennai since last year. This one is uh, Chennai factory's picture. We are supplying the, the compressor, which is manufactured in Chennai factory. This is our compressor, and then its unit, uh, we are supplying this. Then from this slide, uh, I'd like to describe you that uh, our company philosophy, which is calling that uh, natural, natural five. Uh, first of, first of all, uh, we are developing that uh, manufacturing these products and then uh, its applications, which is using that uh, this five refrigerant. Then I think this slide, uh, I think you already know. Uh, we have um, uh, two uh, mainly um, uh, two issues. One is ozone, ozone depletion issue, uh, by cause, causing by that caused by that uh, HFC, HCFC and the CFC refrigerant. And then global warming issue uh, caused by that uh, uh, green uh, green uh, greenhouse gas uh, greenhouse gas, uh, including that uh, HFC uh, gases. Okay, this one uh, is uh, this slide is actual actual activity uh, against that uh, global problem uh, that I mentioned. Uh, one is ozone depletion issue, uh, and then another is global warming issue. Uh, this uh, against this group uh, ozone depression issue, uh, according to the Montreal Protocol, uh, we are I mean, uh, uh, regulating that the CFC and the HCFC refrigerant, and then global warming regarding global warming according to the Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement, uh, HFC uh, target uh, to regulate that. This one is actual activity uh, in. Uh, according to the Montreal Protocol, uh, phase down of the CFC refrigerant, uh, represented by uh, R22 or something like that, regulated as uh, this slide of, as this slide based on the Montreal Protocol. Uh, India is Article 5 parties. Uh, as you can see that the uh, chart on right hand, uh, consumption of the HCFC refrigerant uh, will reduce by zero. Uh, to zero by 2030. And then this one is uh, regarding global warming issue. Uh, this issue has been caused by greenhouse gases, as I said. Uh, this slide shows that the uh, global warming potential of each gases. And then uh, ma, if that uh, CO2, uh, it, this is natural uh, refrigerant, if this CO2 set to one, Another uh, global warming gas, uh, like uh, HFC refrigerant, uh, is relatively high, as well as CFC and HCFC. And this one is actual activity in Europe. Uh, Europe already decided to phase down that uh, H HFC gas like this. Japan, uh, this is my country. Uh, this, uh, Japan also started to regulate that uh, F gas. This one is a uh, picture of the F gas reg regulation in Japan. Then, uh, well, this one is a summarized picture uh, of the uh, refrigerant. And then my, I think you can see that the natural refrigerant is very uh, no risk to adopt that, uh, your refrigeration system. Then, uh, because of that, uh, we are uh, trying to develop and manufacture the natural fire products uh, and the applications. This one is actual applications of us. Uh, this is uh, one of, uh, we are supplying that uh, these products, actual products, uh, which is using that natural gases, natural refrigerant. Then 
One is this one, uh, just a moment. This one is Unimo. Uh, Unimo can provide uh, the hot water uh, by using the CO2. And then Chris is defumigation system, and its product have, have also adapted the CO2. Uh, this Chris uh, is defu defu uh, defumigation system is used for the uh, cold storage as well. Then plus heat is uh, ammonia decompression system, uh, mainly providing that the hot water. And then Pascal, this Pascal air uh, have realized that the cryogenic temperature by using that the air itself as a refrigerant. Then uh, from here is the main subject. Uh, I'd like to introduce that the Newton system, which we are supplying to the customer. Uh, we have I um, yeah, this uh, eight eight uh, lineup of the Newton system. But today I describe you that uh, this six uh, six type of the Newton system. Then first of all, uh, this is Newton. Uh, new, uh, sorry, uh, this Newton adopted that uh, indirect method, uh, which is uh, it used ammonia as a primary refrigerant and CO2 as a brine. Uh, direct method have to use that a large amount of ammonia, uh, but uh, we can reduce this large amount by using that uh, indirect system. Okay, uh, totally 9% uh, today, 95% uh, industrial refrigeration uh, in India is using that uh, ammonia refrigerant. Uh, but some customers don't like the ammonia because uh, of they consider that uh, ammonia is sometimes dangerous. But, but uh, we'd like to propose that uh, ammonia and the CO2 uh, indirect system to for solve that, uh, this uh, problem uh, by safety design and control system. On the other hand, uh, if freon, uh, it cons uh, cons uh, consumes bigger energy than ammonia, normally speaking. And then freon is harmful for the environment, as I mentioned. Uh, so ammonia CO2 system has, has uh, is uh, best uh, choice of the, uh, to solve that, uh, this three problem. Okay, this is a picture of the Newton. Uh, everything, uh, including that the compressor, heat exchanger, condenser, and then CO2 receiver, and then control panel in the same skit. Okay, uh, specifically, uh, we arrange that uh, this, system, this system like this. Uh, ammonia is existing only inside of the uh, skit, this one. And then CO2 will go to the cold storages. Additionally, we put that new technology inside of new, this Newton system uh, for improve that safety and safety and the energy savings and the maintenance. Okay, uh, so I I described that briefly uh, that the entire future of the Newton. Uh, uh, first of all, this uh, it realizes that the minimal loading amount of the ammonia by uh, maintaining that the cooling, uh, with maintaining that the cooling capacity. It, re it realized that the extremely safety equipment because of only 21 kgs ammonia is inside of this kit. This Newton 3000 can be applied at a 3000 ton F-class uh, cold storage with one unit only. I think this is a uh, revolutionary thing. Uh, that only 21 kilograms of ammonia is uh, good on this scale. Uh, for reducing this ammonia amount, uh, we developed that uh, new plate heat exchanger. And uh, yeah, this heat, new, uh, plate, heat plate exchanger. And then we uh, reduce that the size of the, this, Newton, uh, this Newton system. Nowadays, uh, this uh, uh, by Sorry, uh, together with that uh, minimize, uh, minimizing that refrigerant, we aim to reduce that uh, uh, weight and then uh, weight and then size together. And then uh, well, this size uh, already I mean, realized. Uh, by reducing that uh, size, uh, you can reduce, I think you can reduce that uh, construction cost and then uh, some uh, another cost as well. Okay, uh, so, so I, I'll skip this, this one. 
Accordingly, uh, additionally, uh, we improved the safety, energy se uh, efficiency, and the capacity uh, this unit. And uh, we approved that a new type uh, compound two-stage compressor with IPM motor. Uh, by adopting new profile with a screw rotor, uh, the efficiency of the compressor itself has improved. And plus, uh, by using IPM motor, uh, motor efficiency uh, has also improved. And we improved that uh, system energy efficiency by adopting this uh, double economizer. And uh, because of this e e energy consumption of the Newton has uh, drastically improved that uh, uh, even compared to direct system. Okay, uh, this slide shows that the typical flow diagram of the ammonia CO2 system adopting that uh, Newton. Uh, by using Newton, a uh, very, very simple system uh, can be realized. Uh, it means there is possibility to reduce the entire construction cost and the equipment cost as well. Okay, uh, then I'd like to describe that uh, new monitoring system for Newton. Uh, Newton adopted the uh, remote monitoring network, which made full use of the I2 IoT technologies uh, from early stage. But uh, initially, we are using this system uh, as a tool of the uh, get the service persons to act quickly uh, when uh, alarm occurred. But we have developed that, uh, this system into a mechanism to analyze that uh, data obtained from uh, entire machine, which is installed in this world and to implement, uh, implement that uh, maintenance of the refrigeration equipment systematically. Then we have already developed that uh, and uh, operating this software for diagnosing that uh, soundness of the unit. And uh, we started to use that uh, new diagnosis software, which can predict that the uh, failure of the machine.